In this video, I really wanna talk about an article that is written inside Bassmaster Magazine that I believe every bass fisherman should read. Whether you are just getting started in fishing or you've been fishing your entire life, whether you're a tournament angler or a recreational angler, this series of articles is just full of little tips and little tricks that I truly believe can help you to become a better angler. And that series is called the Day on a Lake series. Now, if you're not familiar with the Day on the Lake series, basically they follow along a professional fisherman as he attacks a new body of water. And they literally timestamp everything so that you can see how long somebody was doing something. And in my opinion, it is the one of the best piece of bass fishing contents that is still made. Now, over the years of me reading this, there are kind of three big things that I've learned. There are kind of three big themes that I've seen among some of the best anglers out there that they all seem to do. And in this video, I want to talk about those three themes. Now, before we get into it, this video is brought to you by my apparel company, Finn Fishing. There is just a few more days left of the June sale that I'm running right now where you can get a USA-made sun shirt, one of the only USA-made sun shirts on the market, a pair of sun gloves, and a bass hat with a wooden bass badge, all for $84 plus free shipping. So it's real simple. All you got to do is add the sun shirt you want to cart, add the gloves you want to cart, add the hat you want to cart. It will automatically discount at, discount at checkout. So uh, check Shopping at Fin Fishing, it's truly the best way to help support this channel, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's talk about Bassmasters, Bassmaster Magazine, and specifically this article. Now, as you can see, this isn't even like close to being the half. I have saved all of my Bassmaster magazines from when I started getting Bassmaster magazines. I have a whole drawer that is nothing but magazines. And I'm actually thinking about making like a cool little wall out of the covers of them at some point in time. But guys, all these magazines, I think with today's day and age with digital content, digital video content, people have kind of put things like the Bassmaster magazine to the side. And there is still some really good uh, articles in here in general. But to me, that Day on the Lake series, when I get a Bassmaster in like every month or every month and a half, whenever they come, every time I get one in, it is the first thing I pull up. I will sit down and I will read this because I think over the years, there's just little tips. There's little little juice nuggets that you get by reading this article. And so anyways, there are three big themes that I want to talk about. And so the first thing that I have noticed in a lot of these magazines is most anglers tend to be on the side of making decisions too quick rather than too slow. I think for a lot of us anglers, no matter how long you've been fishing, one of those questions that kind of sits in the back of our mind is, am I giving this too much time? Am I being too stubborn? Am I throwing this lure too long? Am I staying in this place too long? Am I, am I staying in this place too short? I feel like timing is something that we all kind of think about because we all know how important timing is. I mean, you can run into a school at, uh, at an exact time that can really make your whole day. We all, know, we all understand timing. And what I've seen kind of by reading hundreds of articles on the Day in the Lake series is that some of the best anglers out there will make decisions pretty quickly. And I think that a lot of times it is, they make decisions by default too quickly at times. But I think that it's better to be too quick than too slow. Because if you give yourself, typically they're giving themselves about a seven hour day in these. And this is actually what I modeled my, uh, the Bass Fishing HQ Lake Break series. This was modeled after this Day on the Lake series articles. I just wanted to make it in a video content form. I'll leave a link for that if you wanna check it out later in this video. But anyways, they put timestamps on everything that these anglers do. So you can see, hey, this angler did this for 10 minutes. He did this for five minutes. He did this for, for 18 minutes. He did this for 30 minutes. And it seems like a lot of guys, when they get into an area, they're giving themselves 
10, 15, 20 minutes. If they don't catch anything, it's moving on to the next thing. And it may not always be that they are that they are completely jumping from one big area to another, but it's like they're going to focus differently on the area. So they might get into an area and fish, you know, lay downs for 10 minutes and then they're not catching any. Oh, they're going to jump over to the seawall that's in that same area and fish it for five minutes. Oh, they don't catch any. They're going to jump offshore and fish a point for 10 minutes. And that is what you see kind of a big theme is that anglers are making decisions very quickly. And in my own fishing, I have realized over the years that a lot of times the best places that I have ever found on lakes up in New York and Florida, here in Ohio, Alabama, wherever it has been, usually when I get there, I am catching a fish within about 10 minutes. And so I think that that is the right mindset to have is to make decisions, decisions too quick rather than too slow. Because if you give a, if you give an area an hour, an hour and a half, and you don't catch any fish, you have wasted a pretty good part of your day where there's a lot of other anglers who may hit five or six different spots in a, that exact same hour and a half period where they're starting to see things a lot quicker. So that is theme number one. And that kind of goes along with actually the second thing that I want to talk about, which is lure selection. This is, this is something that is you know, one of the biggest questions you always get asked, you know, on comments is what lure for this given situation here and there. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. When you go through all these articles, what you will see is that it is completely guess and check by even some of the best anglers in the world. When you get out there on the water, the best thing that you can do is have a number of lures tied up. Lures that are fast, spinner baits, you know, uh, crankbaits, lures that are slow, Texas rigs, jigs, yeah, lures that are finesse. Because what you see time and time and time again, not only do these anglers give an area maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but within that 10 or 15 minute time frame, they are going to throw a lot of times two, three, four different lures in that 10 or 15 minute time, time zone. So when you think about efficiency out there on the water, some of the best anglers on the world, not only are they making decisions on where to go really quick, but they are constantly experimenting. They're giving things two or three casts with one lure, picking up a different bait. Two or three casts with another lure, picking up a different bait. Until they start getting clues, and then that is when they, they start to dial things in. And so that is something that I think is really, really important to do. I think that it is important to have a lot of rods on the front deck of your boat or with you at times so that you can experiment as much as you can. I truly believe not only is that good for figuring out the bass, but sometimes that's just good for figuring out individual bass. Because the one of the biggest things that we've learned over the years is that bass are kind of like people where different things will get them to move. You know, for example, you may throw a spinnerbait at a, a single bass and he doesn't give a crap about it, but then all of a sudden you flip a jig in there, bam, he gets it because he wanted that. The next bass right next to him, maybe 10 feet away, you flip that same jig, he doesn't care, but you put that spinnerbait in there, bam, he gets it. Bass are very opportunistic feeders, but they're also very different. And so I think that's another good uh, point as to why we should always kind of switch up our baits as much as possible. I think that that is really, really big. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about, and this is something that I think is the most important when it comes to this, is that there's a lot of I don't knows when it comes to these articles. There's a lot of times, and what I mean by that, there's a lot of times where, you know, you're talking about the best anglers in the world and they don't always know what's going to happen, what's going to work. They're always out there experimenting. And the one thing that I, you know, I was reading an article just the other day, and it was an article, I can't remember what magazine it, it was in, but it was Trey McKinney. And he is, Trey McKinney is, I think he's the angler of the year on the Bassmaster Elite Series right now, currently, like he's at the top of it. So he's basically the best angler that there is in tournament fishing right now as we're talking and with that being said he's also very good with his electronics and with that being said this is not just an electronics point this is for all of fishing 
He was talking about when he was looking at some fish on his forward-facing sonar, not knowing whether they were bass or crappie. And so like, he didn't know, like, I don't know. Like I said, they don't always know. People may be able to say, that's a bass, that's a crappie, that's a bluegill, that's a catfish, whatever it may be. But sometimes there's an I don't know factor. I just heard the same thing. Patrick Walters said this exact same thing. He said, if there's a fish out there and it's moving, it's worth a cast. Meaning that he doesn't always know for a fact that's a bass. Sometimes he might be like, maybe that's a bass, maybe that's a carp, but it's worth a cast. And that's this is all talking about forward-facing sonar, but there's other points in here where guys who are really good at certain techniques will tell you, I don't know if they're gonna bite it. And for me, that just gives me a little bit of confidence because there's a lot of times when I'm out on the body of water trying to figure out the fish and I'm in an I don't know what to do type of phase. And to know that even some of the best anglers in the world go through that exact same uh, like thought process, it just kind of gives me confidence knowing that I'm not alone. So, all right guys, that's the Bassmaster Magazine. If you guys want to check out the uh, Lake Break series of video that I've done on Bass Fishing HQ that's kind of modeled after this, I'm going to leave a link for it right here. Also, don't forget to check out Fin Fishing, and I will see you guys tomorrow.